It's actually over five years now since I started talking about gaining admission and getting into a higher institution. And for all this while, I've always had students seeking admission around me, which makes me really understand how confusing, stressful, and frustrating this process can be for students, especially if you don't really understand how the whole admission process works in Nigeria. From the day COVID, I actually started writing on Facebook, which eventually led to this YouTube channel because my own admission experience was quite frustrating before I eventually got into medical school. Today's video is going to be a well detailed explanation of how the whole admission process works in Nigeria. And yes, I'm going to be answering this famous question I get all the time. You know, I get a lot of questions asking, can 256 study medicine in UI, can 300 study law in UNISIC? By the end of this video, you'll be able to tell yourself if your score is good enough to go for a particular university. and. Ultimately, I'm going to be telling you how to make smarter decisions because your UTME result, which is your jam result, is not the only determinant of your admission. That is why you will see some people with very high score eventually not gain admission and you see people with average score get admission for their desired course. There are several variables and it is important you understand all these things. Yeah, this video is going to be quite detailed, so I'm going to be putting a timestamp in the description below. So you don't have to watch through all the video if you don't want to. You can skip to the part that is relevant to you or the part you want to know. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here and well, I'm currently a third year medical student of the University of Ubalo. Actually, in a very short while, I'm going to be in my 40 and I can't wait for then. Right, so please, I'm going to ask for a favor before we go into this video. The favor is for you to like this video because liking it is going to help the algorithm show this video to many more students and also subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed yet just click the subscribe button right now and lastly share this video with someone you feel might genuinely find it helpful now let's go into the video now the first now to talk about are the institution you can get into in nigeria university is what most people know but there are more than just universities in nigeria so we have universities we have polytechnic and college of education let me talk about university first of all because that's almost everybody's first choice in nigeria we have the three different kinds of universities we have federal universities state universities and private universities and when you are considering picking universities there are some things you, sh you should consider one is the expenses like can your parents or can you afford the price of the university another thing is to consider how competitive the university is compared to the results you already have yeah, like there is a result you will have which is not advisable to pick a particular university. And lastly, understanding the mood of admission of that particular university will also help you decide whether or not to pick them because some mode of admission from, or from some university will favor your results, why some will not. We're going to talk more in details about this. Let me quickly talk about Polytechnic and College of Education. The main difference between university and Polytechnic stroke College of Education is that the degree is different. In university, you're going to be getting bachelor's degree. In polytechnic, you're going to be getting ND, then HND. And in College of Education, you're going to be getting NCE. Another thing is the duration. University is usually four years to six years. While polytechnic is two years if you're going for ND. NC is about three years. Some might argue that the certificate you get from polytechnic or College of Education is not as valuable as that you get from university. But the world is changing very rapidly and even going to university and finishing with a degree doesn't guarantee your chance of employment or success. You know, what actually matters in this day and age is the ability to create value. So here's my little piece of advice. Whatever institution you decide to go for, whether university, college of education or polytechnic, make sure during your time or during your stay in school is not just to pass exam and catch pros make sure you learn marketable skill that can i mean this is what can set you apart at the end of your um, college or university or polytechnic days now that we have talked about the three different institutions you can get into in nigeria now let's talk about the two major modes of getting admission into these institutions so the first one is the utme mode and the second one is the direct entry so UTME is the commonest one. UTME mode is just taking the UTME exam, which we call JAM, you know, and applying for a university, which in most cases, you're going to write a post UME or in some cases, you're going to be doing a screening, which eventually gets you admitted. But you're going to be starting from under level if you're passing through UTME. Now, the second one is direct entry. 
in direct entry you will be admitted directly into 200 level instead of starting from 100 level but there has to be a prerequisite now the prerequisite could be doing an a level program so a level program could be igmb or cambridge a level you know, these are program i've talked about it before but i'm going to also talk about it subsequently on this channel in a level program you go to somewhere like a school for like one year you're going to do basic sciences or whatever basic courses you do in 100 level so that place is going to be like your own 100 level you're going to take exam and if you meet the requirement you'll be admitted straight to 200 level for that particular course you could also use a first degree instead of a level to get direct entry into university 200 level for example someone that has gone to polytechnic before that has nd can use that nd to apply to university and the person is going to be starting from 200 level or someone that has gone to university before for four years can still decide to study another course like quite a number of my classmates are actually doing this they studied different courses before and they came back to study medicine using direct entry but they did not start from 100 level again they started from 200 level now the next thing we want to talk about are some common things you are going to be coming across during the whole admission process and these things are things you should definitely understand they can be quite confusing but it's important you understand them now the first thing is cut off mark cut off mark is the minimum score you must get in your jam for you to be able to apply to that university or polytechnic post uni or screening so if you do not get up to the cut off mark for that particular school for that particular year you will not be able to even apply for the school post uni or screening and all schools are the liberty to set this cut off mark at any number they want though jam also set a particular cut off mark which no school must go below for example last year the cut off mark from jam was 140 for university 100 for college of education it means that no university is allowed to set their own cut off mark below 140 but most universities last year actually set their own as 160 170 180 200 you know and most schools don't usually change their cut off mark schools like ui uniben They've been known to set their cut of mark as 200. Some schools set their own as 160, some as 180. You can find a list of all schools and their cut of mark. So passing the cut of mark for your institution means you are eligible to apply for the post UME of that institution or to take the screening form. But it is very important to also know that passing the cut of mark does not guarantee your chances of gaining admission. It doesn't guarantee your admission because i've always had this misconception by students some for example might just go on google and search ui cut off mark for medicine then google is going to show him 200 then you say okay i got 250 so i'm going to gain admission to medicine no that is not exactly how it works the cut off mark which is always at about 200 180 is just so you'll be qualified to fit the post uniform. form now the next thing to talk about is quota Quota is the maximum number of students a school can admit in each department. Each department in a school actually has a quota and they cannot exceed the quota. And the quota is determined based on the resources, based on the size of their classes, based on the facilities they have. You know, they cannot take more, more students than the facilities they can contain. I'm going to use UI as an example again because UI is what I'm familiar with the most. In UI, the quota for medicine is actually 180 but UI doesn't actually admit up to that so if 10,000 or 5,000 or 1,000 students applied for medicine in UI they will only admit the top or the best 150 of them now the next thing to talk about is aggregate and aggregate is the cumulative results you get after all your results has been considered institutions usually consider three results which are your o-level results then your utme results which is your jam and lastly your post ume results that is why your jam result is not enough to get you into your institution according to jam policy at least 50 percent of the aggregate result has to be from your jam so most schools will divide your jam results by it to get the 50 percent now the remaining 50 percent the school can choose whatever they like to complete it so there are some schools that use the three results they use your utme results your o-level results and your post uma results an example of such school is unilag so unilag gives 50 percent to your utme results they give 20 marks to your o-level results which means that 
they will take your five core subject and a1 carries five mark b2 carries four mark and like that so if you got five a1 in your five core subject it means you already have 20 over 20 and the third one is your post -UME. the post you are going to be writing is over 30 you know 50 plus 20 plus 30 is 100 why some universities consider post UME and just UTME an example of such school is UI so UI consider just 50 percent from your UTME and the remaining 50 percent is from your post UME and like I've said before you should make decision based on all this factor when I was applying for medical school my O level result the O level result I got admission with is filled with C's and few B's if I had chosen Unilag, for example, or even worse, Lasso, my chances of getting admission would have been lower. I might have not gotten admission. But because UI doesn't really consider O level, once you have the credits, once you have C's in your O level, you are good to go. Then what they consider is your UTME result and your post UTME result. So I knew I had to work hard for my UTME and my post UTME, which gave me equal opportunity or equal chance at other people that even had A's in their exam now the third category of school are those that use just your o level results and your utme results for these kind of schools you don't have to write any exam after writing your utme a good example is lasso so they take 50 percent from your jump the remaining 50 percent is from your o level it also has grading so your five core subjects a1 is 10 mark b2 is 9 mark and like that so if you got five a1s in your five core subject it means you've gotten 50 percent that way and you see you are at a competitive advantage if you have a's in your exam for such schools so if someone has credit 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 c6 c6 c6, 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 c6 and you are applying for a competitive course i think lagos is not going to be a good choice for you now it's time to talk about departmental cutoff points now departmental cutoff points is the point that is set after your post UME or screening, below which you will not be admitted for that particular course. So I'm going to explain what I've just said. For each department or for each course in every university, there's going to be a particular number above which you'll be admitted. If you score above that number, you'll be admitted. If you score below the number, you will not be admitted. The thing you need to know is that this cutoff point is not set before the admission. It is usually set after the admission. And here's how it is set. Let me use you as an example again. Let's say 1,000 students picked UI. They've written their UTME, their JAM, and now they've written their post UME. UI is going to calculate their aggregates all over 100. You are going to arrange them from number one, the highest to the lowest. You know, I told you you are a quota for medicine, for example, is 150. The 150th student, the aggregate of the 150th student is going to be the departmental cutoff point for medicine that year, which is why you can't really tell. You know, when I get questions like, am hey, I scored 270 something? Will I be able to gain admission with it? Yes, you can actually predict the chances of gaining admission, but you can't be so sure or perfectly sure yet because your post UME result is also going to be considered, which can put you at an advantage or disadvantage. And secondly, the overall performance of students that year too can matter because it's competition for a limited slot. For most of the competitive courses, there are always more people applying to the slot than the slot available to pick them. It means they're just going to pick the best and the rest will be displeased. So that is why if you are going for a competitive course, you know, you have to do very well in your exam. You have to try to score as high as possible. The last thing I want to talk about is merit, catchment and ELDS. ELDS means educationally less developed state. And I'm not going to talk in depth on this. There's a video that I saw by a professor. I'm going to link it in the description below. You can check it out after this video. He has done a good job of explaining the old thing, but in simple terms, your state of origin can also affect your chances of getting admission. There are some universities that actively consider, you know, catchment area. Catchment area is basically area that are around the geopolitical zone of that school. The school is publicized it on the website. The state that fall in catchment area of the school is usually neighboring states. 
of that school and the state that school is actually residing people from that state always have a little more advantage over people that are not from that state so this is another thing you may want to consider okay i think i've done quite well explaining the whole admission process now let's talk about how to know your chances of getting admission how to analyze your result and predict your chances so i'm going to be assuming that you've seen your o level result right now and you've seen your utma result the first step is to know the institution you want to apply for that you've already applied for and know their mode of admission like what do they consider do they consider o level utma Prosemo, and what percentage do they give to them you can find all this information online very easily just browse how the admission process of the school you chose works and in subsequent videos i'm going to be making more specific videos for different schools so once you've known how the admission modalities and what they consider the next thing is to check the previous departmental cut off mark for that course you chose in that particular institution now analyze your results analyze the utma result and all level results you already have and ask yourself this sincere question if i sit for the school post tma can i beat the previous cut off mark with this my utma and o level aggregate i already have and also ask what score do i need to get in my post tma to be able to beat like the previous cut off mark if you see that it is unrealistic or you need to score maybe 95 over 100 in your post tma to be able to beat it then the best thing is for you to change your institution pick a less competitive school for that particular course or change your course pick a less competitive course in that school and if you believe it's possible to gain an admission with the results you have or you are ready to take the risk then i would say go for it and finally the last thing i want to talk about are seven different steps to take to increase your chances of gaining admission this year Step one is to prepare well for your exam. So I've said it before that the higher your score, the higher your chances of getting an admission. Though you might have written UTME or JAM right now, but there is still post TME exam there. And post TME actually matter a lot. If you have high UTME score, don't relent because you know many people might feel like, oh, I have I've gotten admission already. You've not, you've not. You have to prepare even harder for your post TME. And if your result is also not so strong your post me can be a way to strengthen your result and increase your chances of getting admission step two is to make practical decision i know some people might be very optimistic you need to score about 95 in your post me so that you'll be able to beat the previous cut of mark in that particular school for that particular course i would say it's safe for you to change your institution pick a less competitive institution or change the course to a less competitive course next tip is to make smart choices for example you are not a Lagosian and your o level result is full of c's credits and you want to choose medicine in lasso for example i think that's not going to be like the smartest decision because first of all you are disadvantaged of not being an indigent second of all your o level result has put you at a lot disadvantage compared to the other student that has is so you can look for other universities that probably does not consider o level as much or that is going to make you fall in the catchment area just try to make smart decisions and there's also one thing people do is switching universities because the time post tme results for different universities will be coming out to be different for example, you can pick a school now and the post UME results will be out. Then another school post UME form is not yet out yet. So if once you pick this school and maybe after the um, post UME result, you saw that, okay, your chances here is zero. People can easily change to the school whose post UME form is not out yet and apply to the school and write the post UME for that school. And it has worked for some people actually. I have someone I know who did exactly that. Next tip is also to remember that there are other alternative institutions besides university. There are, there are Polytechnic, there are College of Education, and there are other alternative routes to even getting admission. You might also use A level program. You know, you could go for Cambridge A level or IJMB which I'm going to talk more about on this channel sometimes. So subscribe so as not to miss that. If your goal is to gain an admission and you score above 140 in jam, then you are going to gain an admission no matter what. If you are smart, 
if you are smart, you gain an admission. And the last thing is to put everything into God's hands and you know, um like yoga would say in Yajomeda or long lower. It means that our journey is in the hands of God. And sometimes a failure can be a blessing in disguise. Because by such for example, my first bad admission experience is actually something I'm grateful for. I'm happy that my I did not gain admission that first time because if I had gotten admission then for medicine, I don't know I might have even struggled in medical school because I was not even ready for it. During my second time of preparing for the admission, I learned a lot. I learned how to learn. I learned about myself, how I study, how I get to understand stuff better. And when I got to my first day in university, I actually thrived. I did very well. This is 2 a.m. I'm supposed to be asleep right now. Because there's school tomorrow. But now. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.